who's piloting junk, and he's fighting against Jeff Rasmussen, who is also playing Rug Delver. So, uh, Rug Delver, still, still a contender here. Yeah, now, uh, Ian Ellis' uh, version of junk is a little weird. There are no him to Turox here. He has four Dark Confidant, who was actually here this weekend. Yes, Bob, Bob Meyer. Meyer. We saw him Friday, we saw him yesterday. Didn't see him today. Oh, okay, and we're underway already. Jeff Rasmussen starts things off with a Misty Rainforest, and let's see what he finds. It is a Tropical Island, I'm gonna guess. Don't prove me wrong, Jeff. Don't do it. Oh, the anticipation. Oh, it's, it's a volcanic a island. Yeah, I was wrong. It so, puts the Roo in the Rug Delver. It's the Ur. No, it doesn't put the Ur. That would be ER, I guess. It's the Roo in the Rug Delver. Now, uh, let's see what he has for turn one. Is he just going to ponder? Does he have the Delver? Looks like he has Thought Scour, some Brainstorms, and a Spell Pierce. Ian Ellis, trying for his turn. Let's see what he has. His turn one plays that he has available to him are Birds of Paradise, Sensei's Divining Top, Max Diamond, and Thought Seas. Oh, an Inquisition of Cosway. So he does have a Max Diamond. Going to cast a Birds of Paradise with that Mox Diamond. And Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt comes down. Let's see what he's searching for. Grabs a forest. Does that in order to dodge Stifle. Um, however, He's seen his opponent's deck list and knows that his opponent's not playing Stifle. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so... Looks weird to me, too. Just the colors looks a little odd, at least on our end. I don't know how it is for you guys, but... All right, and a Mox Diamond. It allows Ian to cast a Thoughtseize. That's going to get spell senses. Ugh, spell pierced. <laughs> spell senses pierced. <laughs> Lost my ability to speak. <laughs> and we're out of words. <laughs> Ian Ellis uh, draws a Liliana of the Veil. Scrubland. That's going to allow him to cast that if he wants to. If he so desires. Brainstorm from Jeff Rasmussen. Yeah, a brainstorm. Gonna use the brainstorm in conjunction with that fetch land. To uh, he draws days. I believe he's on uh, days bolt and something else. I think he just put it back. But I could be wrong. It depends on where he put the cards in his hand. Didn't quite catch it. I thought I saw a spell pierce in there, but I could also be wrong. All right. Thinking about what else he wants to put back here. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't really want to shuffle away many of these. I, I wouldn't necessarily even crack that tarn until I drew my next card. Yeah, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's exactly what he's done. done. Yeah. Untaps, draws. Now you can crack that, yeah. So he cracks that. He's gonna grab himself a tropical island. Hopefully, he can get some pressure on the board. Earlier we were discussing whether or not you should play a Taiga. Uh, some people were asking whether or not you just wanted a basic land. Jeff chose to play a Taiga and a basic island in this Rugged Delver deck. Wow. Only three wastelands. That's how he's making some of the room. Only three trops. Only two volcanic islands. All right. And uh, Tarmogoyf comes down for Jeff. So there's some pressure, and uh, apparently it is a 4-5 Goyf. Thank and you, now, Jeff, uh, for using fact, the advice. Uh, you don't have to do that with your Tarmogoyf. Uh, it's sometimes relevant to just not, uh, like, never misrepresent what your Tarmogoyf is, but at the same time, you don't need to tell it's your opponent what it is. The they, it can, they can figure it out it, for themselves. Never just give your opponent free information. 
All right, Tarmac Wave coming in there for four. Ian's going to drop to 15 here. Yeah, in the meantime, uh, Ian tried to resolve a Knight of the Relic Raid, but, uh, but it was dazed. Yeah, it's weird. It, like, it looks like it's good for a second, and then it goes back. Our connection was crap. Okay, got a slightly bad connection. Right. And a uh, Ponder from Jeff. See what he finds here on top. Looks like there is a uh, mongoose, the nimble variety there that he can cast this turn. Force in hand. Uh, pretty well set up right now. Yeah, Jeff just wanted some pressure, and uh, he's got is. a threshold and nimble pressure. mongoose. It's gonna be pretty nice for him. And a wasteland. Uh, probably just gonna take out the red source of this wasteland. Maybe cast a Liliana, make Jeff sacrifice a guy. Kasali no, it's the juice to go with the Kasali Prime Mage. Maybe it, he must not have a Liliana. Or is that a Savannah? Am I misreading that land? It's not a scrub land, it's a Savannah? I think it's a Savannah. That explains it. Okay. Um, yeah, interesting. So fetching up that far is hurting Ian pretty significantly this game. Uh, Jeff now attacking for seven. Wasteland on Waste the away that savanna. Ian draws. Yeah, unless you can fetch uh, really Maze aggressively for basics. Um, it's generally better to just grab the duels. If, if you already have duels in your hand that you're going to play as land drops that you need. Because they have targets anyway, and you might as well just have your mana work out well. Interesting how many times we've seen a wasteland followed by a maze of this uh, today. Yeah, I feel like and so many obviously, uh, if the, your opponent has like light from the loam in their deck or something like mm -hmm. that to go with their wastelands, then you want to just grab the basics almost no matter what. Yeah. But, you know, especially when he's playing against a rug delver deck that only has three wastelands, and he knows that. So uh, Ian mazes the Tarmogoyf, but still takes you uh, takes a uh, swing from the Nimble Mongoose down to five. Jeff and, uh, untaps. Ian just not really able to do too much. Misty yeah. Rainforest from Jeff. And the Mongoose. <laughs> I like how Goyf kind of had vigilance there. It's like, I'm not going to turn it sideways. I'm attacking like that. I assume you're going to maze it. And it was maze. So Ian down to two and can't find an answer to uh, to the pressure. Can't yeah, really find any wearing a Bruce Lee shirt. Uh, last night I watched Enter the Dragon. Or had it on while I was sleeping. Yeah. But absorbed it. Absorbed Apparently it, I yeah. did too then. <laughs> I was there too. Oh, and we're back. Oh, that's right. We have trivia. Yeah, we have some trivia for you guys. We're all prepared this Would time. you like to ask the question? Sure, why not? So, uh, you know what? I'll even type it up as I, as I do it so that Jesse doesn't have to worry about it. Um, so, we're going to give away three months of free premium to a random person who correctly answers this question and tweets it in at the uh, SCG Premium. SCG Premium. Right there you go, there. weatherman. <laughs> SCG Premium right there by JBL's hand. So, uh, so we're going we're gonna to give you guys softball here. Pretty easy one. Yeah. Should be able to get it. Yeah, especially if, you, if you're into magic and you're, you're excited about, you know, what we've got, what's coming up. If you're kind of, you know, got your finger on the pulse of magic. You would know the answer to this. What is the name of the large expansion coming out this fall for Magic? Not the core set. No, not the core set. That comes That's out in the summer. In the summer. All right, there's a... in the autumn. Yes. It has been announced officially, and people are excited about it. And I'm um, excited about it. Yeah, and, and it's it looks very exciting. So I'm what guessing, is it? Where yeah. are we going? Yeah, what, what plane are we going to? Yeah, where are we traveling yeah, I, to? I want to know the name of this set. Yeah, so I, I'm going to tweet that. I'll tweet it. it. You got it? Okay. So I, I wrote it down, so if you want to get, you know. I was paying attention. You got it? All right. Jesse's got it. He's like, <laughs> I got this. I got this. I got this. All right. So on top of it. So, uh, yeah. Multitasking. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I'm really excited about that new set. I am too. I want to feel We talk about wanting to fast forward to the fall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's... It, Thinks that's the question because that means we can't talk about it right now. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you mentioned it, I was like, man, let's talk about that. <laughs> we can. So looking at these sideboards, um, Jeff Rasmussen has Ancient Grudges, which he'll probably be bringing in. Uh, Submerges, which he'll definitely be bringing in. 
and are the sulfur elementals good? No, they're not. So, two ancient grudge and four submerge, probably coming in for Jeff Rasmussen. Um, probably taking out his force of wills, and I'm not sure what else comes out. Um, you can probably take out some number of days, but th that's about it. Uh, maybe you can just cut some spell pierces, like trim some. The spell pierces are actually pretty good here. Yeah, we saw uh, saw one being relevant. Yeah, during that game. Yeah, I think he just cuts uh, three Force of Wills, three days, and brings in Force of Merge and two Ancient Grudge. Force of Wills, like, terrible against the deck with discard spells. Yeah. Just, like, the, the absolute worst. Um, Is that the same e Yeah, I know they gave Ian... Yeah, Force of Wills is such a, like, a strange card, because Force of Wills, I feel like it's always the worst card in your deck. I, I feel like that, too, but you always have it. You, you have know, to you play have to have, it, You yeah. want to play at least three, if not... Four, you know, like it. I'm sometimes two, I guess, but it just seems like. But you know, the cool thing about that is, it's always you always have, uh, well, almost always have room to bring in cards <laughs> because force is a card that I tend to want to cut. Yeah, um, I. Uh, you know, if I sideboard it's not out force of will like more often than any other. Yeah, card it's almost like, like all see. right. So what can I bring in for force of will? You know. Yeah. So it's nice. All right, cool. I've got a copy of Ian Ellis' deck list here, too. I was just trying to see, because it's hard to read, and I guess this it's not even any better. For whatever reason, yeah. did he, he may have written his list in pencil, and then when they copied it, or is it just very, yeah, it comes very out a little, light? Uh, rough. I'm like, Gaia's Cradle Zenith. Oh, Green Sun Zenith, sorry. <laughs> you know Gaia's Cradle is $70? No. I just was talking to Wes at the booth. I was like, it was like 30 bucks uh, last summer. Or not even last summer, you know, like a, like I feel like I guess it was last summer. Now that I think about it, but no. like 30, 35 bucks. I knew it was like still a good card, but you know, it's like a seventy dollar really? card. Guy's cradle. I have those. Yeah, I have those too. I got some. I got oh, two man, last I'm summer at thirty. Them. I was like, hey, cool. Wow. Man, that's yeah. When I was over there before, that's funny because I was looking in the uh, in the case and I saw Sarah Sanctum was like fifteen bucks. I was like, can I play Sarah Sanctum really? Oh right my! Here. Holy waffle tacos! <laughs> the guy's cradle. Yeah, Sarah Sanctum showing us uh, about eighteen dollars. Pretty nuts. Yeah, that is absolutely crazy. Now, uh, yeah, but looking at these sideboards, uh, looking at Ian's sideboard. Uh, he gets to bring in Thalia, which is awesome in this matchup. Gets to bring in Choke. Gets to bring in Pernicious Deed. Uh, oh, Timely Reinforcements is insane here, huh? Yeah, I could definitely see This matchup gets really this good is... for Ian Postboard. He's got a lot. He's got. Did you see the Ulvenwald Tracker? Yeah, because he's beating. Sideboard? Yeah, like imagine against Maverick, like. They have Mother of Runes, and step, make you tap your Mother of Runes, my turn, kill your Mother of Runes, every time you have one. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm a knight deck that makes my knight bigger than your knight deck can make it. your knight. Okay, my knight will fight your knight. So I've got a, a little bit of backstory from Ian on the Wolven Wall Tracker. He said it was an island 15 minutes before the, uh, before the, <laughs> the event, just for fun, because he thought it was funny. He put Ulvenwald Tracker in instead, so I don't know that he ever intends to bring it in. But I mean, it's but awesome. But it actually, you actually bring yeah. up good points where it could work. I mean, it's funny to me that he, he put that in the sideboard. But I would love for him to uh, have brought it in. If he plays against Maverick, he's definitely bringing it in. Yeah, it's, it's if he doesn't, he's making a mistake. That, that card's pretty insane. See, his Green Sun Zenith too. It's just like a one mana guy he can just grab with Green Sun Zenith that can just dominate a game. Ian Els starts things off to the Birds of Paradise. Into an Ulvenwald Dragon. Whoa! Just kidding. You know, when I first started playing, we didn't realize it. We thought the mana abilities, you could, we knew you couldn't attack right away, but we thought, like, we were brewing, like, birds, elves, elves. <laughs> you could turn one ridiculous number of mana out. creatures. <laughs> Alright, Delver of Secrets for Jeff. Yeah, we, we all had the crazy, like, mana acceleration decks because <laughs> we thought that they all worked that way. 
so a Delver Secrets for Jeff. And uh, that is a scrubland. Yes, it is. Yeah. And so, the, the color has been corrected. Thank you, Jesse. I'll try my best. And we've got a Swords to Plowshares. Delvers to Life Gain. That's about it. Yeah. Pretty and nice now, answer. Uh, and birds. Two mana from birds. And ooh, confident. There That's he a is. Pretty good start. Bob yeah, Mar turn. himself. Nope. Gets but a days is going to deal with that. No. And Misty Rainforest from Jeff. Looks like it was. Uh, Oh no, he was just put it. I thought he cracked it. Looked like he was about to anyway. So, passes back. Ian untaps. Plays a Marsh Flats. Pays two. Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf is just a, what, a 2 3? I think it's just instant land in there. Well, no, uh, Confidant. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh no, the, the, where's the Confidant? Uh, I got countered by days. Yeah, I know, but I, I guess it's just hidden. Yeah, that's it's underneath it that sort of, uh, underneath the Legacy Quarterfinals okay. Commentator's box. That's why I wasn't counting Creature. Jeff uh, cracks that fetch line, and Ian's going to respond by cracking his own fetch line. Loading screen. Again, Ian, uh, doing his best to play around Stifle, despite his opponent not having Stifle in his deck list. And he has seen his opponent's deck list. He must have misread something. He must think his opponent has Stifle, because he's been playing around Stifle this whole game. Yeah, like in game one, too, he played around yeah. Stifle really hard. Yeah, he must be thinking, you know, he must have looked at it and then just forgot, and so he can't remember. <laughs> you know, he's kind of like, did did he have Staple? Well, I guess I'll just play around it just in case. And I mean, he's allowed to look at his opponent's deck during sideboarding, too. Yeah, maybe he just didn't, or he look, at least wasn't looking for Staple, you know, wasn't thinking about that. Thought he already had it in his head, but... And uh, Jeff with just land go. Not really how Rug Delver wants to operate, but. Well, it looks like he signed in Sulfur Elemental. Not great against Ian's deck. Well, just does make his blocker, Stoneforge right? yeah. Elemental into. Uh, uh, or Stoneforge Mystic into like a very reasonable 2 1 for 2 as opposed to. Yeah. <laughs> so submerge on the Tarmogoyf. It's pretty good. Man, if Jeff had that submerge when Ian cracked his fetch, it would have been a great time to play it. Shuffle that coif away. Yeah, there are multiple um, gonna, schools of thought with this. Submerge. Ian's going to shuffle it away anyway. Using submerge in response to your opponent's fetch land or like a knight activation, it's really good because it actually gets rid of it instead of putting it on top. Right. But a lot of the time, if uh, if I'm winning, mm -hmm. um, I would rather wait till they're done shuffling and then do it. Because if you're winning, right. you, you just, you just you want know to what continue winning. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're good there. I get it. I mean, that makes sense. In this case, though, I think shuffling it away yeah, it probably better. Yeah, definitely be better. You're right. So, Wasteland for me. And, and Batter Skull. Yeah, and a mm, Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce is going to make that Batter Skull into uh, a yes. Tarmogoyf pump. See, is Ian going to use this wasteland? Pretty nice, actually. Ian doesn't realize that that spell snare or that spell pierce actually worked out for him pretty well. Um, Jeff has an ancient grudge in hand, so so he's all set. <laughs> yeah, like the, the better skull resolved. He just, he'd been he'd been fine anyway. Yeah. Uman's out with Jitay, coming down for uh, Ian. Going to put that in his hand. He may, he can uh, cast it as an uncounterable spell using Stoneforge Mystic's ability. Violet in. Yes. And there is a Taiga from Jeff. As we All mentioned. three dual land types. Yeah, we mentioned he has a Taiga and he also has a, a basic island, just in case. And uh, a sulfur elemental. 
Wasteland your taiga. Wasteland's the taiga. That's a weird time to play Solver Elemental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're you're one two. I'm gonna make it better. I'm gonna make a trade with my Solver Elemental. <laughs> I, it seems odd. Like it's one thing if Stone Forge is a one one. I understand. It's not though. It's a one two. So now it's a two one. I thought you know Sulfur Elemental is more for. Maverick and even lingering souls. You know? It's incredible there. Against a Stoneforge Mystic, yeah. it's not. And that even great. against Maverick, it's just okay. You right, know, but I mean, he takes out the Mother, Mother of Runes. That's the whole Which thing. Which is pretty good. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome against Maverick. You know, yeah. It's, that's against like the number souls, one. It's obviously just right. insane. Right, but I mean, even, even killing a Mother of Runes and preventing any more Mother of Runes and while it's on the table, like, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. But it, to make a stone forge mystic into a two one doesn't seem that great. What well, irrelevant for now anyway. Uh, lightning bolt on the stone forge mystic, it would have died whether it was a one two or two one. Sulfur elemental gets in, and now Ian has a maze of it. Taps two plays Umazawa's Jite. Can't vial it in, so this can be countered. Jeff uh, appears to have let it resolve, and now Birds picks it up. And yeah, now uh, kind of interesting because Birds can't get put any counters on that shit. No, no exalted triggers here like we saw. Uh, but I uh, mean, hypothetically, if Ian does draw like Slide Pride Mage, it'll be better for that jit to be on the bird than to not be on the bird. So right. May it's definitely well worth it, it to put it on there if you don't have some other good action for your opponent's turn. Ancient Grudge dealing with that Umazawa's Jitte. That is the Innistrad Ancient Grudge. And Sulphur Elemental gets Maze of Ith. Ian now. One mana for a Sensei's Divining Top. Yep. Yeah. It's time to uh, use that Divining Rod and uh, see He's what gonna, he can find. gonna oh. make him uh, flip the top here, I guess. Uh, ancient, back end of Ancient Grudge, targeting the top, and the front end of a second Ancient Grudge now targeting top in response. So Ian now responds by using the top, checking out the yeah. top three. Now interestingly enough, um, when he puts this top back on top, then another top activation is going to resolve. Yeah, so now Ian gets to look yeah. at the top three again. And he sees cards that I'm sure he's completely surprised to see. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't look at him the first time. I kept my eyes closed. I mean, Ian just picked up a lot of free cartage there. Yeah, I mean, it was... At least one full free card off Yeah, of it, it was really just the back end of an Ancient Grudge and the front end of another one, so he got, like, one full Ancient Grudge out of it. Um, Jeff does still have an available Ancient Grudge in the graveyard to flashback. Now, Ian plays Knight of the Reliquary. Jeff responds with a Brainstorm. Knight of the Reliquary, a base 1-1 one, one due to the Sulfur Elemental. I'm sorry, not a 1-1, one, one, a... Uh, uh, three one. Uh, three one. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, what's the number? Plus. <laughs> yeah. Maze of Ith, Pretty cool interaction with Nether Roll Quarry. Yeah, where you can attack and then maze your own knight so that you can start activating it. Activate it. Yeah. And I mean, it's also just turned something into an awesome blocker, just in general, like your knight. Or even better than attacking with it, you can just activate it and then untap it. Well, you can't untap it with the maze unless it's an attacking creature. Um, are you sure it's not just that played only during combat step? I'm talking about Maze of Ith, right? Yeah. Is it? Target attacking creature. Okay, okay. Yeah. 
And Tarmogoyf and Delver of Secrets added to the Japs army. Goyf is a 4-5. How big is that knight? Ooh, a choke. That's going to be pretty good here. Wow, Jeff is tapped out. If that choke is resolving, it's going to stay tapped out. He's not entirely tapped out. But all of his islands currently in play are tapped. And choke has resolved. Ian now plays Sensei's Divining Top. And uh, looks to be in a pretty good position here. Jeff probably going to crack this and try to find a Taiga. Four lands in the graveyard, which makes the knight a 7-5. Wow. Still a pretty big knight. Actually getting a little boost from the uh, from the sulfur elemental. Would be a 6-6, six, six. instead it's a 7-5 due to the sulfur elemental. Very, uh, very strange that Jeff brought those in. I feel like it's hurting him more than helping him. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering what he took out for them. Because uh, he definitely brought in the Ancient Virgins and the Submerges, like I thought he would. But he also brought in his Sulfur Elementals. And... Delver of Secrets. Delver of Secrets. So Jeff, content to stay tapped out as long as he has an army. And his army is uh, fairly threatening. He's got, he's got the 4-5 Goyf. He's got yeah. the, the Sulfur Elemental, and he's got two Delvers that can really be threatening if, if they flip. Yeah, the moment those flip, it's uh, really scary. Yeah, no, it, yeah. it puts Ian on a really, really fast clock. Ian pays one at his birds. Cracks that fetch line. Doesn't like what he sees on top with that top. his options. Grabs a bayou. Hey, that goif is not a 4-5. It should be a 5-6. Because didn't he, I mean, there's he, check on that goif. Are you checking on that goif? Yeah, is. I thought there was a creature in there. And if there's a creature in there, there's definitely a batter skull in there. There's a instance and uh are there wait a minute are there sorceries maybe sorcery is what's missing yeah i don't i don't think there are sorceries maybe that's what's missing i was thinking uh, they thought creature was missing all right ian uh, activating this night again can you go ahead and sacrifice fire it's uh, we can't see their graveyards very well i uh you know Twitter mentioned maybe the Goyf having five power. I thought that may be a possibility, but I'm still I'm not seeing out. not seeing sorcery. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Bob Bob died in this game, right? That Creature, was Creature Instant Land Artifact. Okay, no sorcery, that's what it is. Creature instant land and artifact. That seems to make sense. Okay. It's sorcery that's missing. Thanks, Sammy B. Screwing everything up. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you for having us all clarify. So Another now, night for Ian. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the big problems with the rug deck is it's pretty hard to beat a knight. Submerge if you're gonna do it, off that's the how top. You do it. Submerge off the top by Jeff. Yeah, he's going to be able to beat the knight. He's going to flip his delvers here. And uh, Drops Ian down to 10 now. Yeah, one gets mazed. He attacks with both delvers. One gets mazed. And, uh, Sensei Top getting replayed. And pay some mana and activate it. See what goods are on the top of his library. Knight getting submerged or getting. Potentially submerge. Oh, Ian's showing him. I don't have a forest. I don't have a forest in play. What are you talking about, man? And submerge anything. When are you doing this? 
I love it. He, he got rid of his bayou so that Submerge was no longer live. He knew his opponent had the Submerge. Yeah. Well played by Ian. That was absolutely awesome, yeah. I love yeah. that. Okay, maybe it wasn't absolutely awesome, but it was cool. I liked it. I'm glad he yeah. played that way. It's tight. It was tight. All right, passes back to Jeff. All right, Jeff uh, crashing in again with both these Delvers. Uh, looks like mazes one, and he looks like he thought about blocking with birds. Still considering. No, he takes it. Okay, goes to seven. Wants the uh, wants the birds for the mana, especially now that he doesn't have a forest. I think. Uh, Realizes yeah, maybe he I mean, actually think needs, uh, needs the mana, needs the green. Has no access to green otherwise. And Stoneforge Mystic. I don't believe you have anything left in your deck, Mr. No, Ian. He's, he's just gonna shuffle. I like that, shuffling your deck. Um especially strong shuffle your deck when you have Sensei top and play. Yeah, getting a fresh three cards on top. Crashing in with both of these knights. They are big. And Jeff forced a chump block with the uh, Tarm Wipe and the Delver of Secrets. And Jeff now, basically, he's got he's got a one-creature army, and uh, it is getting caught in a maze every time it attacks. Yeah, and so, not only that, but he's he's being choked as we speak. Yeah, he can't even... Uh, it's, this is just really, really rough for Jeff. I think if Jeff pulls this out, I will be shocked. No, he's, they're already scooping it up. Yes. He, uh, the only thing he's pulling out of is the game. Yeah. So, Ian Ellis evens it up. One game to one here in the quarterfinals of the Star City Games Open Series. Madison versus Jeff Rasmussen. Jeff on Rug Delver, Ian on Junk. And, uh, I think, you know, Rug Delver has been kind of a mainstay over the past few months. Yeah, and Junk, you know, it's something that we used to see all the time in this Legacy format that kind of has, uh, you know, waned a little bit in popularity. Finally, now we're seeing it again. It's good to see somebody doing well with it. Yeah. But uh, this Junk list that Ian's playing is very different than the ones we're used to seeing. Normally, you'd see a card like him to Turok. Uh, you'd see, you know, all the things you expect to see. Four Swords to Plowshares, which Ian has. Um, and then... Ian's discard suite is just three thoughts he's in an Inquisition as opposed to something like three thoughts he's like one Inquisition for him, all right, all of that. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, when I think of junk, I usually think of what Kibler tends to run in Legacy, and he's always, you know, heavy on the Elspeth plan. Oh, Knight, yeah. Knights I mean, of the Reliquary and Elspeth, like, I think that Kibler just starts off with those and then <laughs> goes, and from, goes there. from there. Yeah, yeah. He usually has, like, one Elspeth in his Legacy decks, and then, like, all the Knights, all of them. And then greens and zeniths, yeah. all his favorite cards. Basically, I mean that's the best it's thing just like about you, legacy, right? Yeah, you just play, play all, all my favorite, favorite cards. cards. And it's good, you know, as long as your favorite cards are good and just pretty, your deck will probably be pretty yeah. good. Absolutely. It's like Gerard, you know, he always plays Team Tim yeah. You know, it's just his favorite card. He thinks Tim Tarok's the best card, and he's not that far from the truth. I mean, Tim Tarok is an extraordinarily powerful spell. Yep. Him, him, I win. It's not a phrase, you know. For nothing. Yeah, sometimes you draw two hymns. Yeah. That's absurd. So, uh, you know, I looked at some of the answers and we got to our trivia question. Seems there, a lot of you guys know what you're talking about. There are some people who know the answer. That's very true. <laughs> what was the question again? Uh, what set? Yeah. Oh, is he, yeah. Oh, that long ago? <laughs> I thought Jesse was joking. <clears throat> Everybody's starting to close up shop here. Yep, hall emptying out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a pretty cool weekend. Really pretty exciting. Picked up some cards from my, uh, from my standard deck. Yeah, so you got some Tamios. You have some Treaty Angels. I did. Did. Very nice. Got some Terminuses. Ooh, Terminuses. Ter I got some Terminuses. Termini. Termini. Terminuses. I feel like Termini. Snuffleupagus. Ooh, Snuffleupagus. He's the best. He is. He is He's a big uh, bird's woolly best mammoth. Friend. Yeah. 
he's an imaginary woolly mammoth. Yes, I mean, if he were a magic card, he would cost one GG and be a 3 3. I like it. I like it. Creature Beast? Um, Would he be, or would he just yeah. be an Uffalump? Uffalump. I like Uffalump. He's a legendary Uffalump. Legendary Uffalump. So I yes. got. So he, I. I Sammy's asking what my standard deck is. It, I, I don't know exactly what the deck is, but it starts with at least. I mean, at least I have. We got Miracles. Group. <laughs> yeah. Is Tamio, Entreat the Angels, Terminus. Uh, I'm, I'm basically. Uh, t we, we talk a little bit about it. Yeah, on, he wants to play the, the uh, deck that won in block. Right, I won the block Pro Tour, but then, like, I mean, you but just a standard add, version. Or. Yeah, you play Ponder. Right. Um, obviously, that would make the deck much better. Uh, instead of playing Thought Scour, you can play uh, Visions of Beyond. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I think um, I think the way I'm looking at it, and this is something before you know before the the Pro Tour, I was thinking I want to build blue white control, um, and I, so I think what it is, I'm trying to build blue white control. I love the the deck that won the Pro Tour. A lot of that can overlap. I certainly was gonna, I was very likely going to be playing Tamio and Terminus in the deck anyway. So, uh, you know, maybe I lean it heavier Miracle, maybe I just lean it heavier on the, the blue-white control and just, you know, sometimes draw and treat the Angels and win. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if you're really, going to go all in on the Miracle version and not going to play any guys in your main deck, I strongly recommend having Merfolk Looters in your sideboard. So your opponents will side out their removal, you side in Merfolk Looters, and then you get a draw step on everybody's turn. That sounds good. And that's twice Ooh. as many chances to hit a miraculous, miraculous uh, win off the top of your deck. Uh, you know, it may it may not work in standard with such you know so much aggression, but I'm gonna try it. That's what I'm trying. I really want to play Tamio. I want to play you know I want to play Control. I want to try it. It's not necessarily something that I would you know. I think you can buy a lot of time with Feeling of Dreads and yeah, all that stuff. You can top deck um, a Terminus. Also, what's the uh, what's the blue one? The upheaval. Oh, um, Devastation Tide. That's it, Devastation Tide. That's another one that seems pretty good. I mean, it doesn't work well if I've got Tamio in play, but, you know, if I'm in that sort of pickle where Tamio's locking one creature down and I really, that's not enough, you know, I'm going to need to use Devastation Tide, then I guess, I guess that's what i got to do, you know? Um, yeah, I once experienced a real-life Devastation Tide. Really? Yeah, I was swimming with my dog in the ocean, and we were just, like, having fun swimming. I was throwing a ball. And uh, then all of a sudden, I looked toward the shore and realized we were like, like hardly see the. the we were like by the buoys and stuff. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, this is probably not good. <laughs> Way out in the ocean. Sometimes you get caught in a current. And you you don't realize. Notice, yeah. I, uh, I. The other thing about devastation tide is its permanence, right? You put you put the permanence back in your hand, so it's kind of you know it's a very upheaval non-land permanence. Yeah, right? non-land so permanence. You're facing down planeswalkers. That's a nice. Yeah, nice or a nice little reset. Um, All right, Jeff leads things off with an island and a turn one Delver of Secrets. That's definitely what he wants in a matchup like this. I mean, he'd prefer a duel, but he'll take it. Um, Ian looks like he has a Swords to Plowshares in hand. I'm going to crack that fetch land and then... Uh, Inquisition. So Ooh, he's, he's going to leave the uh, he's gonna leave the Delver there for now. Um, swords works just as well on the 3-2 Delver, although maybe... You know. Yeah. And, Maybe not. Uh, I mean, he could just nab this goif. Yeah, I like Jeff's that. Hand. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, you know, he he's gonna have room to play around that uh, spell snare, especially because you know Jeff's hand has a three drop in it. That's definitely gonna hinder his mana. But he's a rug delver deck. He has less than twenty lands. I'm presuming. Let me count. Um, another thing, devastation tide. 18, so. Devastation tide is very good against tokens. Yes. Kills them dead. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see what Ian. Or I'm sorry, let's see what Jeff manages to uh, put together with this ponder. Probably going to have a land for turn two. I'm assuming he's probably going to wasteland away that bayou. I guess he could just play a trop and cast Nimble Mongoose. That'd be just fine. Mm -hmm. He needs to just make sure there's pressure. Yeah, and that's exactly what he does. 
So no, he's I mean, got Ian's two one ones gonna... for one that tend to grow. Ian now trying to uh, trying to make sure he can deal with these guys that are that be some trouble. So swords of plowshares on the Delver from Ian, very good way to deal with it. Yep, only has to uh, let Jeff gain one life. And Sensei's Divining Top will help Ian dig for some answers to the uh, to the Nimble Mongoose or Man, more likely, I'm so greedy some when I watch uh, when I watch games of Legacy. I'm always thinking about how much greedier I'd be being. Like I, would, like I he, Ian has deed in his hand, uh, pernicious deed, <laughs> and uh, I would have been greedy. I you would just wait it around. Delver. Yeah, he waited and saved the swords for later so you could deed. Sammy B points out there are now sorceries in the graveyard. Thank you, Sammy. Yes. <laughs> yes, there are. It's true. There, there are multiple sorceries in the graveyard now. And there's a Tarmogoyf. Four five. Yep. No artifacts. Sorcery instant that. land creature. Ian plays a Horizon Canopy. That's going to deal a little bit of damage to him. A pernicious uh, deed, uh, Jeff. He has a pernicious deed. What does this card do? It's got the old border. A very good card. It's got the gold border. Um, from Apocalypse. Yep. Furnish is an enchantment for one, one green, one black. So three mana total. Uh, X colon sacrifice pernicious deed. Er, X comma sacrifice pernicious deed colon. Uh, destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with converted mana cost X or less. Yeah. So. Uh, Does not kill planeswalkers. Goyf and mongoose into the red zone. That's for five damage. Wasteland on the uh, on the bayou. So. Yeah, Ian now able to wipe out tons of damage. Wipe Jeff's side of the board if he wants, and I think that's what he just has to do here. Yeah. Yeah, pay some life. And in response, looks like he's gonna. Yeah, put I mean the he, top. he held yeah. priority for long enough. Like yeah, before well, he moved the pernicious deed to the graveyard, he exactly did that. So that's yeah, fine. And uh, plays a windswept heath, passes back to Jeff. And we're clean slate here. Yeah, I mean, Ian at a pretty low life total, but it's not really that big of a deal here. Now he's going to start getting to cast his knights. Maybe get a batter skull in there, you know, all the fun stuff. Gets a bayou here. Yeah. Uh, grabbing a bayou. You know what the best part about the bayou is? Um, jambalaya. Yeah, I've been to New Orleans and had some jambalaya down there. And alligator tail. It was good. Ooh, I've never had alligator tail. It was very, it was very calamari-ish to me. Like it was chewy. It was fried. So that's probably what made it seem like calamari. <laughs> it all tastes the same when it's fried. Uh, Dryad Arbor. Yeah, taking another ping from that Horizon Canopy. Going to green Sun Zenith for two. And uh, Spell Pierce is going to deal with that. Now Jeff uh, left with just a Sulfur Elemental and a Spell Snare in hand. Can't cast Sulfur Elemental. Yeah. And would it even be that good if he could? No. I mean, it would just be a beater, actually, right now. So, uh, dry speaking armor, of which, Dryad Armor is going to knock Jeff back to his starting life total. Yeah. Such a feisty tree. Yeah. All right. Marsh Flat's coming down for Ian Ellis. Going to crack that, and let's see what he'll grab. Taking a lot of damage from his lands here. Horizon Canopy tends to do that. And yeah, we're playing against a deck like Rog. You know, they do have bolts. They can finish the game quick. I think if I'm Ian, I might go ahead and sack that canopy, and get a card off it, and uh, stop. stop taking all this stop damage. Stop taking all that he's, damage. He's already taken quite a bit. No, Liliana. Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Now Ian. he can uh, force each player to discard a card. Interesting. Discards a Maelstrom Pulse. The letters in Ian's name almost spell Liliana. Ooh, I never even noticed that. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> Ian Ellis of the Vale. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah, I was in Quick Check buying a roast beef sandwich at like 2 a.m. the other night, and uh, <laughs> the woman working behind the counter's name was Liliana. And I like was like, Liliana, nice. <laughs> she was just <laughs> she was like, looked at me all weird. Like, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> anyway. So, so Liliana gonna sacrifice plus that Horizon can't be yeah. a draw card. Liliana pluses and... Uh, <laughs> Jeff discards land. I didn't see what Ian discarded, but there's a Sensei's Divining Top and a Caracas from Ian. And a Tarmogoyf. 
Tarmogoyf gets Spell Snare. Liliana plus one. Ian with nothing in hand. Yep, now he's down to just one card. Jeff has to Liliana's. discard that Sulfur Elemental. What a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that's not the first thing he discarded. Yeah, now uh, the Wasteland from Ian. Now when he, uh, when he factor fictions Jeff's permanence, he can leave Jeff with an actual zero permanence if he wants to. And a scavenging ooze has the uh, has the pressure. Yeah, me and scavenging ooze. And that's as we like to say. That is what is it? It's a big game. <laughs> it's a big game. <laughs> ooze the beat down. And uh, yeah, going to go ahead and remove Tarmogoyf from the game. Gain himself a life. Start recouping the losses from that Horizon Canopy earlier. Now it's a three-three. Yeah, I, and, uh, I think Ooze is actually, I mean, in so many cases, better than Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf's just a beater, right? Yeah, I mean, Ooze, Ooze has taken the place of Tarmogoyf. Gains like, I know, and it, it, yeah. it gains life. It's a beater just like Tarmogoyf. It takes a little more effort to grow it, but uh, gains life removes cards from the graveyard that, you know, that are going to be flashed back with Snapcasters and things like that. Um, so Inquisition from Ian takes a Nimble Mongoose, leaving Jeff with a Lone Force of Will, which is discarded to Liliana. Liliana now seven counters. Ian now Next turn can ultimate and firm still control around. of this game. Yep. And Jeff can't even find a red mana. I mean, red mana source. If you just a floating red mana somewhere, you can find. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Jeff drawing another card and uh you go ahead and remove that nimble long goose now. It should be very close to us. Going up to ten. Sees that wasteland again. This time he should keep the wasteland on top. And yes, he does. So untaps, draws the wasteland, plays the wasteland. Oh, don't use it before you ultimate Liliana. Yeah, oh, he's not even going to bother ultimate oh, Liliana. Oh, he's just, okay. That makes sense. I mean, makes but him to, isn't it the most fun to have your opponent have no permanence in the play? It seems pretty fun. That's the most fun. He could have had no permanence on the other side of the table. He just missed out on so much fun. Well, look, though, he's, he's doing a good job, though, because I think yeah, I mean, he's the other thing is winning. he's keeping Jeff's hand empty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jeff can only cast But, instance. I mean, Jeff would have one card and no permanence in play. That's kind of yeah. good. I, I said he can only cast I mean, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> matter cast, how he does it. At he this point, to, he's... He has to cast whatever he draws immediately, so... Uh, yeah. But, meanwhile, he's getting beat down by a giant ooze. Like I said, ooze the beat down. Yes. Who's laughing now? Comma, the beatdown. Whose line is it anyway? Whose turn is it anyway? It is. So uh, there's a ponder being Jeff played by to, Jeff right now. Able to ponder, yeah. Get and a, uh, get a brainstorm. Get a brainstorm. Now, this isn't really going to work out too well because oh, I guess it will. There yeah. it is. And there you go. Ian Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ian Ellis of the Veil takes down uh, Jeff Rasmussen. Yeah, man. Uh, with, Ian. Uh, with